Yep, I got a new telescope. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. New telescope day is always a happy one, but I'm particularly excited about this little guy and the role it's going to play in my ever-evolving astrophotography journey. This is the new Stella Lyra 4.5 inch f4 imaging Newtonian from one of my favourite astro retailers here in the UK, First Light Optics. In this video I'll share my initial impressions, cover its main specs, and I'll let you know how I'm planning to use it going forward. There's loads to cover, so let's get straight into it. For full disclosure, I paid for this scope myself, so this video isn't sponsored in any way, and as ever you'll get my unbiased opinions on it. First Light Optics have released a number of different scopes under their Stella Myra and Stella Lyra brands. The Stella Myra range is dedicated to refractors, and I'm actually using one of their 90mm ED triplets at the Remote Observatory in Spain, which is hosted by Pixel Skies. I've been super impressed by the images coming out of that scope, so I had little hesitation in jumping on these newly released Newtonians. These come under the Stella Lyra range, which covers other reflecting scopes, including Dobsonians, classical Cassegrains, and some Ritchie Crescens. I'll post links to First Light Optics website in the description below the video, so you can go check that out if you're interested in learning more. They're a great company to buy from, and their customer service is consistently exceptional, so you'll be in very good hands with the team over there. One of the main things that attracted me to this particular scope was its price. This little thing's currently retailing at £299 here in the UK, and for that price I was willing to take a punt and try it out. I'm really classing this as one of my fun scopes, and I'm excited to see what I can achieve with it. Let's cover the physical specs first, and in case you haven't already noticed, this wee thing's tiny. The tube itself is just 370mm, and it weighs in at just under 3kg. This gives you a great range of choice when it comes to mounting your scope, and you could get away with using a mount with a much lower payload capacity than you usually need with other Astro rigs. This range of Newtonians come in a carbon fibre tube, which can be beneficial to stability when considering collimation and focus. I really like the dark black and charcoal colouring here, contrasted with the bright white Stella Lyra text, and the carbon fibre seamless. I think this is a really sharp looking telescope. All of these physical attributes are beneficial when considering the scope for astrophotography, which is its intended purpose. I'll be doing a full follow up review of the scope once I've had a chance to play with it for a while, and I'll be able to test all of that out, so stay tuned for that. This scope has a native focal length of 456mm and an aperture of 114mm, making it run at a speedy focal ratio of f4. This is great for imaging the night sky, but faster speeds also require more precise collimation when compared with slower Newtonians. For those of you who don't know, collimation is the process of aligning the mirrors of your scope so they work together to deliver properly focused light to your eyepiece or camera sensor. It's an integral part of running a Newtonian, and it's something you'll have to deal with. Once you get the hang of it though, it's not that hard, so don't be put off by it. Up until now, I've been imaging with the Skywatcher PDS range of Newtonians, which run natively at f5, so I'm looking forward to comparing the images and experience of using this faster f4 rig. Right, let's turn now to the scope's main features before I move on to show you how I'm going to be using it. This Newtonian comes fitted with a parabolic primary mirror at the back of the scope, which is claimed to have 94% reflectivity and a quartz protective coating. To help your alignment, there's a handy central spot in the mirror so you can dial in your collimation. There's also the usual collimation screws here for moving the primary mirror. Up front we have an oversized secondary mirror, which also has a quartz coating, and first slide optics state that the secondary mirror size is 41mm, again with 94% reflectivity. Having an oversized mirror is handy for imaging, as your targets will benefit from the increase in illumination. Like most Newtonians, the secondary mirror is attached to these four spider vanes, which include screws for moving the mirror during collimation. Unlike some other scopes I've used though, these vanes are a good deal thicker and look more robust, so I'm confident the holding collimation will be much easier with this telescope. There's a very good chance that the larger vanes might also produce more pronounced diffraction spikes in my images, but I'm a fan of spikes, so I'm not really worried about that. The components here are solid, and have a high quality look and feel to them. Both the primary and secondary mirror supports are fully machined, and it really shows, they look really nice. The internal portion of the tube has also been blackened, so that should really help prevent any unwanted reflections, and increase contrast when imaging. Although this scope sports a standard size focuser, it looks a little oversized, but solid on this little tube. This is a 2 inch rack and pinion focuser, which sports a dual speed function for more precise control. The focuser glides through the length of its travel, and the fine focus knobs buttery smooth. For my purposes I'll be fitting an autofocuser to it, but for manual control it works beautifully. 
By the looks of the focus knob positions, I'll need to take off the housing and flip it around so that my ZWO EF sitting on the best side, but I've had to do that with all my Newtonians, so it's no big deal. This chunky knob at the top of the focuser is used to clamp down and hold the focus position. I'll be sure to test this out with my imaging train, but it certainly feels solid and secure, so I don't anticipate any issues here. Right next to the focuser, there's a single finder shoe for mounting a guide camera or any other astro accessories. As this scope's marketed for astro imaging, I would have liked to have seen a secondary finder shoe somewhere to let me mount a guide scope as well as my ASI Air or any mini PCs. As the scope's so small, I can certainly see that there's limited space on it for anything else, so I can get the thinking around that, but I'll have to consider how best to connect all of my gear here. Something you'll have to bear in mind if you're picking the scope up for yourself. Keen eyes will have noticed the lack of any tube rings on the scope, and you may be wondering how to rotate it. Well, this rig has a cool wee feature that I haven't seen before in any other Newtonians. There's two small screws at the front and the back of the scope, which are used to control a handy integrated rotator. You can loosen these screws and then rotate the tube to your desired angle, and then tighten them back up to hold the scope in position. It works really well, and just like the focuser, it's nice and smooth. But there's a potential issue to be aware of, depending on how you like to set your scope for imaging. Along the base of the tube, there's a full length fixin rail, which is perfect for the size and weight of this tiny scope. But at certain rotation angles, the focuser will hit off it, and you aren't able to rotate a full 360 degrees. I like to have my cameras pointed downwards for balance and to keep my cable management tidy, but I can't position it that way in this scope. Again, I can see the logic of not including tube rings on this size of scope. Because of its stubbiness, there's much less room to attach tube rings anyway, especially when you consider how much room the focuser is taking up. Not a deal breaker, and I can certainly work around it, but again, it's something to consider. It's worth mentioning though that first slide optics have two larger variants of this scope, a six inch and an eight inch version, which do have tube rings as standard, so you'll have more rotation options there. I do like the idea of the integrated rotator in this scope though, and it does its job well. Now I'll share my plans with this scope and how you'll see it being used on my channel. This scope's all about astro imaging for me, and I don't plan on doing much visual work with it, as I have other scopes for that. If you do want me to do some visual tests with it though, let me know in the comments below. I'm planning on two types of imaging with this scope, long exposure deep sky astrophotography and some live stacking EAA or electronically assisted astronomy. For these, I'll need to mount a camera to the scope and based on its size, I'll be using my ZWO 533MC Pro and Player One Uranus C. They're both one shot color cameras and relatively small themselves. I'm not really sure, given the relatively small size of the tube, that I want a large imaging train with a mono camera, off-axis guider, and a filter wheel hanging off the focuser, so a one-shot colour camera might be the better option here. With this scope and these camera combos, I can target some of the larger galaxies and deep sky objects that grace our night skies up here in the north. As it's not the longest focal length, I think this scope would struggle when imaging smaller targets, especially some of the more distant galaxies, but again I have other scopes that can do that job. 456 millimeters is plenty though, and I'm looking forward to sharing my images with you all over the season. For astro imaging, especially with a scope this fast at f4, I'll definitely be using a coma corrector. Newtonians by virtue of their design suffer from an aberration known as coma, which can make stars in your image or field of view distorted, and they end up looking like little comets. A coma corrector tries to eliminate this and ensure that you have a flat field across your image, so they're really vital when it comes to imaging. For my other larger F5 Newtonians, I've been happily using this Skywatcher Aplanatic, which is actually optimised for their F4 Quattro series, so I don't see any issues with using it with this wee Stella Lyra. I also have the excellent Starazona Nexus, which acts as a coma corrector, but also a 0.75 times reducer. This gives me a wider field of view, and also a faster focal ratio. So my wee scope here will turn from a 456mm F4 to a 342mm, even speedier F3. I'm not sure I'm that crazy to try it out yet, but stay tuned as it might be fun to give it a try. Either way, I'm hoping that imaging at f4 or f3 will be great for my astrophotography and let me suck up those photons much quicker than I have been. This is a real asset when imaging here in the UK, as our clear nights are few and far between. Likewise, through live stacking in EAA, I'm excited to see the differences in collecting data compared to my slower scopes. So that's my quick look at my new imaging scope. This wee tube's got a lot going for it, and I think it's going to be great fun to work with. I love its small size, lightweight and sharp carbon fibre look. Its high quality machining, robust housing and chunky spider veins will be great for astro imaging and provide a nice stable platform to mount my camera on. I also think its build quality far exceeds what I was expecting at only £300 and I'm really happy with how the scope looks straight out of the box. I would have liked to have seen another finder shoe for mounting additional accessories 
and I would have preferred if the tube could fully rotate so that I can position my camera exactly where I want it. These aren't deal breakers for me though, and as astrophotographers we're used to compromises, aren't we? I just think this wee scope's going to be a lot of fun to try out, and for the price I was more than willing to give it a go. Watch out for my full review once I've had more time with it, and let me know in the comments below what questions you have on the scope so I can include it in my follow-up video. I'll do my best to answer those for you. Thanks for tuning in, take care of yourselves, and clear skies to you all.